Some of the most captivating unsolved mysteries are those that involve missing persons. It seems almost unfathomable that an individual could simply go missing and never be seen or heard from again. In our unending search for answers, it's hard to comprehend that in some cases it's likely that no answers will ever be found, leaving us wondering what happened to those who appeared who simply vanish from the face of the earth. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be diving into three such disappearances and the strange circumstances surrounding each unfortunate and unique case. Chris Kremers and Lisanne Froon Almost a decade ago, in April of 2014, two Dutch girls in their 20s, Lisanne Froon and Chris Kremers, went for a hike through the jungles of Panama and were never seen or heard from again. The girls were students who were staying with a host family in Panama for six weeks while they hiked, toured and volunteered with the local children. They had been in the area for two weeks on the fateful day in question, when they decided to take their host family's dog on a walk into the Panama jungles around 11 in the morning. However, once night fell, the dog returned to the family with no sign of the girls and the host family began to worry. The local authorities conducted an aerial search of the dense forests, while volunteers searched the surrounding village and area on foot, but by the time both of the girls' parents arrived from the Netherlands five days later, there was still no sign of them. No trace of the girls was seen for ten weeks, although people continued to search the area in the hopes of finding a clue as to what had happened. When a local woman found a blue backpack that had washed up into a rice paddy along the banks of a local river. The backpack was determined to have belonged to the girls and contained two pairs of sunglasses, cash, Froon's passport, a water bottle, two bras, both of the girls' mobile phones, and Froon's camera. Authorities were excited at the prospect of investigating the camera and phones for possible clues, but ultimately these pieces of evidence only created more disturbing questions as to the fate of the girls. The phones had been working for ten days after the girls initially went missing and logs showed that they had made almost 80 attempts to call the emergency number. Although none of these calls had been able to connect due to the dense jungle, the police were able to use the logs to paint a rough picture of where the girls had been during these 10 days. The first two calls occurred only hours after the girls began their hike, and after four days, Kremer's phone was locked due to too many unsuccessful attempts to unlock it and it never received the correct pin before both phones ran out of charge on April 11th. What was even more concerning were the photos found on the camera. At first, the photos depicted what seemed to be a fairly normal hike, but later photos taken in the dark of night about a week after their disappearance showed personal items spread out on rocks, plastic bags, candy wrappers, strange piles of dirt, and a mirror. Also on the camera was a disturbing photo of the back of Creamer's head, which was leaking blood. Also found in the area where the backpack had been located were Kramer's clothes, which had been left carefully folded alongside the river. After two months of searching the region for further clues, the case came to an unfortunate end when Froon's pelvic bone and her foot, still inside her hiking boot, were found. Shortly after, both of the bones of the girls were discovered. Froon's appeared to have decomposed naturally, but Kramer's were stripped and bleached, pointing to possible foul play. However, no further clues were ever discovered. Their tale has continued to haunt the minds of people all over the world, and people speculate even to this day about what could have happened to them deep within the Panama jungle. Paul Hibbard Unfortunately, some mysterious disappearances are never solved and the families and friends of the victims are left without any closure, wondering what may have happened to their loved one. Paul Hibbard was a geologist who worked for Burge Exploration in Colorado. He was a very valuable employee for the company due to his specialized geological knowledge and a geological van that he was able to use to locate deposits of minerals such as uranium, coal, oil shale, and other valuable deposits that can be found in the mining regions of Colorado. Shortly before his disappearance, Hibbard received a call from someone who claimed to work for Burge Exploration, telling him to bring his geological truck to the Gillette, Wyoming area. Suspecting that the call was fraudulent, he checked with his boss, who confirmed that nobody who worked for the company in that area needed his van. 
Approximately a week later, on May 28, 1976, Hibbard was performing a routine geological exploration in the same area of Gillette when he disappeared along with his geological truck. The truck contained over $30,000 in radioactive material, and Hibbard's boss suspected that this fact, when combined with Hibbard's specialized geological knowledge, might have been cause for someone running an illegal geological exploration company to kidnap him. The first clue as to the disappearance showed up almost two months later, when a Wyoming resident was discovered to have almost $10,000 worth of Hibbard's specialized geological equipment in his possession which he had been trying to sell to his boss. Although the man was convicted of grand larceny and was questioned about his knowledge of Hibbard's disappearance, no leads appeared. The next month, Hibbard's truck was found abandoned after an anonymous call to the police tipped them off to the location. The truck was covered in copious amounts of blood that covered the door, floor mats, and seats. Although DNA testing was unavailable at the time, it was assumed to be Hibbard's blood, and the final sign that elements of foul play had conspired in Hibbard's disappearance. However, despite the recovery of the truck and certain elements of the equipment, no further leads ever surfaced and Paul Hibbard was assumed to be the victim of a kidnapping of some sort, and it's presumed that his life had been taken from him as he has never been seen or heard from again. Ebrahim Puldar Ebrahim Puldar was a 59-year-old man who went missing from the Los Angeles, California region on July 28, 2016. This date was the last time that anyone reported having seen him, although it was not until his disappearance was reported by his brother on August 6 that he was officially considered to be a missing person. On August 11, almost two weeks after Puldar was last seen, the grey Honda Civic, which he had been borrowing from a friend at the time, was found in Carlsbad, California, which is adjacent to the San Diego area. Police records indicated that the car had been there since at least the 30th of July, and this was the only clue that investigators had as to the disappearance of Puldar, although it raised more questions than it answered. For starters, Carlsbad is an almost two-hour drive from Los Angeles, where Puldar lived and was last seen. Friends and family were unable to come up with a reason why Puldar would drive to the region, making the appearance of his car even more mysterious. A week after the discovery of the car, Puldar's wallet, keys and pants were found near the region that the car was discovered, stashed in some bush near the Buena Vista Lagoon. Although there was a chance that someone had stolen the car, driven it to Carlsbad and then abandoned it, the fact that Puldar's belongings were also in the region seemed to point to the probability that he also had been in the region at some point. However, authorities had no idea whether the abandoned clothes indicated that he had arrived in Carlsbad of his own volition or had been kidnapped. His family claimed that he had no known medical conditions that might result in such an abrupt departure, but that he did like to drink alcohol and partake in gambling. Despite this, authorities were unable to ascertain whether he had outstanding gambling debts or other related issues that might have brought him to the region, or whether these facts even had any bearing on the case at all. The region was thoroughly searched by tracking dogs experienced in both search and recovery as well as the discovery of human remains, but nothing was ever found. Due to the strangeness of the disappearance and the resulting discoveries, Ebrahim Puldar is considered by authorities to be missing under suspicious circumstances and endangered, although many people have presumed that based off the discovery of his clothes and wallet that he was kidnapped, harmed himself, or met an untimely demise, Ebrahim Puldar has not been seen or heard from in over six years. But what do you make of these cases? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.